Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me? I can. All right. Um, so let's get started. I think everyone you know. So uh, today, the white. Are there any questions about anything? Any problems? with the homework assignment. Let's take a few minutes and just work through whatever um, questions you might have before we get into anything. Are there any questions? So you had your homework, your first homework assignment due last Thursday. That was the input and output and variable. Today you have another homework, um, conditional structures that you need to submit. So how is that going? Did you all submit? Yep. Okay. Um, I will start looking at your first homework assignment. Um, you know, uh, I teach all day today, but tomorrow I'll take a look at. I'll start taking a look at those. Um, and we're using Brightspace now, so I have I, you know it's it's the first time we're all grading in in Brightspace. So let's see how that works as far as giving you feedback. Usually I just write something. There's a text box somewhere where I can write, you know, the reason if you lost points. So make sure you check that. Um, you know, given it's your first homework assignment, I'll take it, you know, I'll, I'll take that into consideration, obviously. But um, as, as we get further in, uh, you guys will, uh, you know, start to follow specific pattern. All right, so uh, so we've had two labs. Uh, are there any questions about any of the problems in the conditional structures lab, which is the one that's due tonight? No questions? Okay, well, all right. So, um, you know, uh, feel free to, you know, uh, you can email me or Mitch, you know, remember Mitch Burke. So, you know, we're here to help you with the homework. So if you have any issues, you know, I, it is, I get it's challenging with this whole virtual thing. So certainly reach out if you're having problems. Um, I guess I will know once I start writing the homework, um, over the next few days, how you guys are doing with that. Um, but so the way that labs work is, you know, labs are not meant to be a lecture like on Tuesdays. So if you, if, you know, it's really about working in the lab. So if you have a problem with a lab or, or this is a perfect opportunity to bring it up, we can this, you know, we can solve it in, in the, during the class here and you know, help you out. Otherwise, I mean, I'm, you know, all I'm doing, I'm going to do that anyway. I'm just going to pick a new problem and, and do that one. So that's the approach. All right. So yes, you're all very quiet. Um, okay. So anyway, so I've said that, um, so if, if you don't have any questions, then we can, I guess we'll, I'll do a problem from this week, right? So I'm just looking in the book here. Um, you know, so here we have, so we looked at modules. When we look at modules, that was the chapter this week. It's a, it's a pretty straightforward chapter, I think. Um, so I guess I'm gonna pick a problem. As usual, I will be posting then four to five problems, most likely. Um, how long is it taking for you guys on average to do a problem, would you say? It depends on the problem. It depends on the problem, sure, but just on average, give me a range at least of how long it's taking you. Oh about 
two hours? Two hours per problem? Yeah. It, it's a lot, right? That includes the coding part and everything, right? And, you know, yeah. Jupyter Notebook. Any problems with Jupyter Notebooks or scripting? That's working fine as well? Um, yeah, for me. Okay, good. All right, great. I'm glad. Glad to hear that. Um, all right, so let's then go ahead and these problems I find to be a lot easier than what we did last week. Um, so let's just pick one and see. Usually I like to pick these from the programming exercises, but I encourage you strongly, and I think I've said this before, do the other problems as well, if you can, just on your own, because remember on the exam, I may very well pick one of these, you know, th that we didn't do for homework. You know, I might bring problems from other books I have, other exams I've done, but I could also just, you know, pick one of these. So if you've done it already, it's easy points, right? And so you want to probably <clears throat> consider that. I find the debugging ones to be a lot of fun because they're usually like, find the error, you know? And so that's, you know, that's pretty nice. Uh, let's do that actually. I, you know, let's, let's, I think, as I said, I think that those are pretty fun. So let's do some of those. I'm going to bring up the PDF um, that I posted and then we can work and that way you guys can talk a little bit more and make sure you're like there. Okay, so, let's see. so I'm just going to go to Brightspace here. And All right, so in bright space, <clears throat> go to you can go to content. And then under the modules, module, uh, go in there and find chapter three for the PDF. Okay. And so let me actually download this. We're going to do these, some of these problems. Okay. All right, I'm going to share this screen now. Right, so you should be seeing the PDF, correct? Yes. Yep. yep. Let's go to scroll down here. And we're going to do debugging exercises. Okay, these are always fun to do. Can you guys read that uh, well? Can you see everything? Yes. Okay, great. So Remember, this is about chapter three modules, okay? So it says on the, let's look at the first one, find the error in the following pseudocode, right? So we've got module main until end module, and then we've got declare real mileage, call, get mileage, right? And then we have Then we have a uh, display. You've driven a total of mileage 
miles, okay? And then over here in get mileage, we have display, enter your vehicle's mileage, input mileage. So it says there, find the error. So what do you guys think? Could be a syntax error type, or it could be a logic error type. So what would you, what would you say might be the problem? Well, I think that's missing the get and the M is, is supposed to be capitalized. That way you could call, call it or something else. Which one, sorry? That, you know, the get, the, um, the mileage when it should be set to get mileage. Or, heads, or it's missing the, the my, mileage module or something like that. The modules here get mileage. Oh, oh, yeah. you're supposed to do it. get something that that will, you know, um, enter the number of the mileage. Mm -hmm. And enter the number, right? So yeah, input mileage, right? We do we do that there in input, but then. When we call get mileage, and then we're actually gonna to try to print mileage down here. I don't know if you guys can see my cursor. Mm -hmm. You can, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there, oops, I need to do that. Um, so, but we never, it's like we never pass the value mileage from this module back over here. You guys see that? Does that make sense? Are there any questions? Wait a second, so, so it doesn't act right ask to return mileage? Yeah, we, if we had a function, we would return it, or this is one of those situations where you do that by val, by ref. I'm going to try to stay away of that by val, by ref, because you don't really use it in Python, and so we're just gonna mainly think of it as passing it as a function, but yes. Questions? All right, so let's look at the second one. And so, you know, I, I find these to be, you know, they're like relaxing or, you know, fun. So uh, let's look at or like puzzles, right? So let's look at the second one now. Okay, the second one. So find the error in the following pseudocode. So we got module main call get calories. And then there's get calories. You have declare real calories, display how many calories, input calories, declare real calories, okay. display how many calories are in the second food, input calories, and module. So what, what do you think about this one? Yeah, declaring real calories twice. Yeah, you're declare. That's like a strange thing, right? You're declare. Why are you doing that? First of all, maybe use a different, um, or just use the same variable. You also only get the calories, and then what do you? What's the point of just getting the calories? You're not really using them, right? So maybe, you know, it's like a logical error. Questions. Okay, no questions. Let's look at number three. Uh, find a potential error in the following pseudocode. So we have now module main, call square number, and we pass a value and module to square number, and it's a by ref number. Okay, so then we do number to the power of two, we set number, and then we display number. What might be wrong here? That that is no variable with just number. Where? Because when it's like it say display number, but you don't like declare variable. It's no like what number. Well, it is declare in the argument, so that's okay usually. So you know that this number here, right? Oops. 
this doesn't work very well. Uh, yeah, and then over here, integer, number, I would actually not even do by ref. I don't see the point of by ref. I would just do by val because it's all, it's all about just passing that number five and then taking that number to the power of something, right? And, and assigning it to number. So the, what might be problematic here is that you have number and number and then there, it's by reference. So it's probably, you know, I, I, you know, you probably don't want to do it that way, but you could, if you'd like to keep it cleaner and simpler, just do it by Val and then this be number one, number two. Um, so anyone else, anyone else see something else that might be wrong with this? Are they not, it says it's a equation, are they not returning it? Well, in this case, you don't need to return because a square number, just call it and then you print it. So at least that, you know, serves a purpose, right? So you square number five, then at the bottom it says display number. So that seems to be correct. Um, I, would, I would argue that the, the part that's not very good is the the by ref you know and then you're assigning that it's not really necessary first of all and this is okay i mean you can have a number in python certainly and change the number and assign it to itself so that's certainly fine just don't do it by ref to avoid problems but you as i said you wouldn't have to do it uh, in Python. All right, any questions or comments? All right, let's look at the other one. Find the error in the following pseudocode. Uh, module main call raised to power two to the 1.5. And then again, you have real value, integer value. So I, you know, that's the way that I would recommend um, you know, as I said, when you do C++, you know, by val, by ref becomes a little bit more, or other languages even, but in Python, it's not really an issue. Um, raise to the power, real value, integer power, declare real result, and then you take value, which is a real, to the power of, so you take 2 to the 1.5, Set that in result, display result. So what might be the problem here? Any thoughts? Guys, any thoughts? Look at it Can't all. find an error, right? Is that what you're telling me? Maybe. Huh? Go ahead. Yeah, please. Go ahead. Maybe because they put the clear real result, and then they put set result equals violent power. So they put like clear real result before they set what the result was. Well, you have to declare what result is, right? The variable. And then result over here gets evaluated given value and power. That caret, that character there just means raising to the power of, and then you're displaying it. So that would be correct. So my, my answer to this is, is, is this. Uh, for four, the pseudocode is not necessarily incorrect. Um, it, it would be incorrect, possibly in some programming languages, but in Python, certainly not because, and this is what I, I've been trying to say for a while, Python is supposed to be, it's a higher level programming language, is there to help you. 
So this type of error, so this is actually a good example of where Python shines, this type of error is actually not a problem for Python. So supposedly the error is that we have real, result is real, value is real, or they're both float, but then power is integer. So you have values of different types. However, in Python, actually, what you do is you might have six variables that are integer, but if you just put one as float, it makes the entire operation float. And that's actually an intentional thing. You know, so let's say that I want to I want to divide something <clears throat> by a number, but I want the result to be float. All I have to do is take my number and do, you know, let's say the number was 23, then I do 23.0, boom, I have float. And so actually this would not be an error in Python. It's actually a behavior you take advantage of. But in other languages, the, the correct answer, the one that you'll probably see in, in your book, is that um, it's because of the data types. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. All right, great, good job. So that's really <laughs> the approach. So I just remembered actually that I only covered modules in the lecture on Tuesday. So we didn't cover the functions or the Python part, even though it's probably pretty short. Um, and so let's do that before we get into the problems because you know, I don't, you know, I, I just remember that. So let's, um, and we just finished the debugging problems anyway. So now what we're going to do uh, after the, the slides is I'm going to come back to programming exercises, probably like kilometer converter, which is a short one. So I, it doesn't, you know, one problem takes me the whole, the whole period. So let me go ahead and um, open that slide here. So I'm going to open functions now, which we've talked about already, but I just want to make sure that I cover it, uh, given that it's your reading in your book. Let's go ahead. All right, so you should now be seeing uh, the slide titled functions. Okay. All right, so we are going to then uh, start. You guys can see this, correct? Yeah. Okay, great. Did I, uh, so remind me, did I cover this or not? I can't remember. Now I, now that I, uh, I feel like part of me feels like you weren't able to finish? We didn't finish. We did start RNG, but I don't think we finished okay, it. Okay, okay, that's what it was. Yeah, because now that I look at it, I it looks familiar. So let's see. I did this. I remember now. The 22 and the 24, we, mm -hmm. we did a walkthrough. And then I think this is where we stopped. Writing your own functions. Okay, so let me just go finish it then. Additional concerns. So while you can pass as many arguments into a function, that's very true you can only return one value. Okay, so that's not right for, that may be true in the pseudocode sense, uh, but it's not right in Python. Python actually has this amazing power where you can you know, return A, B, C. You can return actually arrays, you can re return matrices, you can return sets of numbers, okay? And so this just, Make a note that in Python, that's not true. Okay. Uh, functions simplify code. That's certainly true. Um, you know, you should always try to write modular code as much as possible. Uh, I wanna, I'm going to give you an example of what I mean by that. So I, I have, um, so I'm going to share my GitHub with you guys. And if you ever are looking for code, for various things. All right, so let me go to my GitHub here. So I strongly recommend that you guys get a GitHub account, start creating repositories. Okay, so I'm gonna share this website. 
So are you seeing a website um, that says GitHub? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so I'm going to click on, actually, I'm going to click on something that I know has a lot of functions. Uh, this one. All right, so uh, let's click on speech here, and then I have probably this one. So this is, you know, like Alexa. You guys know how you've heard of Alexa, right? And like the Amazon Alexa. So this is, you know, a code program of how uh, uh, some features of Alexa would be written in Python, okay? And can you, you guys can see a lot of code, like a lot of imports? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so when I talk about libraries, you can see, you know, the structure of how I write programs, I put in a little bit of information about a program, then I start, jump into the libraries themselves. Look at how many libraries I have there. And all of those libraries just have to do with Mostly, not, not all of them, but mostly have to do with processing speech. Because in Alexa, you know, you say things, right? So a lot of these are, are just capturing the, the WAV files, the audio, and converting it into something in the computer in memory. Then you can see this is object-oriented, so don't worry about that. But I want to show you, you know, <clears throat> uh, all of these that, that, uh, that you see here are what would be global variables, except that I'm using what is called object-oriented programming, so I don't define global variables in that sense. I define them like this as part of an object, but we will explore this later on. And then you can see here, when you call a function in Python, when you, sorry, when you define a function in Python, you use the keyword def, right? So look at how many, this is modular because look at how many functions I have. I have, and this is, what I like to do, you don't have to do this, but I just like to separate them by lines. It just makes it a lot, I'm, I'm, you know, I like things to be very structured and clean so they're easy to read <clears throat> for me, for students. Uh, so you can see, <clears throat> here's the function. Here's another function. You see that? Here's yet another function, right? And then there is another function, right? Another function. You know, another function. And notice that within these functions, I'm using, you know, I use this thing called wave, for instance. And if you scroll back up, you will see that wave was one of those libraries I imported. So that's what they mean when they talk about functions and libraries, right? These are the libraries that I'm importing. And those libraries have hundreds of functions. So imagine how many functions this program has. You guys get my point? Imagine each one of these, each one of these could possibly have 20 to 40 functions, right? Each one of these that says import. So I'm using, what is that? Uh, and, and the lines of code within each function are, you know, could be hundreds, right? So imagine how much code is here. I don't, I haven't counted this, but you know, say 20 to 30 libraries, each one having 20 to 40 functions each function having on average 100 lines of code. You see, do you see how much that is? Guys? So imagine if you were gonna write that whole program from scratch, that you're, not, you're talking easily, you know, 30, 50,000 lines of code. Do you think you could do that? <laughs> no. No, right? No, no, no sane person <laughs> would do that. Right, so what happens is, each, believe it or not, each one of these libraries, each one of these was developed by a team of people. So think about that. But that's what's so great about libraries is that a team of people, you know, very good people in, in what they're doing, um, build a library and then they made it available for you to use. And will it have errors over time? Sure, but you fix it, right? So you, you, you fix it over time. And you, you, that's why you need to, software is a thing, it's, a, it's not a living thing, but it's a thing that has a life cycle and you have to maintain it. It's kind of like that. So I post this code, I give it to people, you know, my functions are not really 
that much. I'm, I'm actually just using the great functions that other people have developed, right? And I'm counting on, on their, uh, on their um, hard work. And then I just put together my little script that does something, right? But I'm building on top of what they do. So this is highly modular and is object oriented. So object oriented is not something that we'll be introducing until the end of the semester. But, you know, Python uh, certainly does it really well. Um, and, but you can see this is what modular is. And, and the, you know, when I, when I do it like with, you know, each function within these lines, <laughs> it helps me to, I feel like it's a module, right? They look like little blocks that I just plug in, plug out. And you can see this modular, modular. And you also, when you do modular programming, you actually look at all the functions. You actually can separate things out into files. So you don't, there isn't one single file. I know we, you know, we used a Jupyter notebook and everything, but when you start writing, you know, like serious code, um, it'll, it'll be basically broken up into files. If you notice, I never actually called any of these functions. Did you notice that I just define the functions, but none of them are being called? Okay. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. Yeah. And then all of these libraries call other, other files. Each one of these is a file, right? That's installed possibly in the, in the operating system. Um, and then you just rely on them. So now, you know, I call this file genus speech. So then I have to go into maybe uh, yeah, like one of these, like uh, record microphone. And then now I call Gina speech and that just basically, but I also import it here. So from Gina speech, import Gina speech. So I import it in this, uh, in this second file, the previous file, you see that. And now, now in here, I do have actual, uh, I am calling the function. So Gina dot annotate speech chunk files. That's in the previous file. And so now I am indeed um, calling them, but you can see modular program is programming is this idea. You build your script, but you, you usually use functions um, and you break it up into files and then you just build your programs on top of other libraries and files. Make sense? Now it just takes, you know, it takes, as I said, you know, when, so when you write a program, this program that I wrote, you know, is, is in a sense written by thousands of people, right? Because I'm using, you know, easily 30 to 40 libraries that other people have used that, that have been around maybe for 10 years and, and have been uh, used extensively and tested extensively. They have different iterations of them and versions and so on. So are there any questions about what I just said? This is just an example I wanted to give you of modular programming. All right, good, excellent. So let's go back then now to the slides. So I think hopefully that'll make the slides make a little bit more sense as we talk about um, uh, these these libraries and, and functions and, and so on. So functions, so now I go back to the thing that I was saying, functions simplify code. All right, so here you can see functions, functions simplify code, and that's very true, right? They make it cleaner, easier to read, etc. They increase the speed of development. Okay, again, you know, the fact that I wrote my own functions and I, I, just have that, I just have that file now on GitHub and it's not just for others to use or for, for my students to use, but it is actually for me to use again. You know, I know instead of rem trying to remember, th and this is, this is the big thing, right? So before GitHub, the way it worked is you had like a computer and, a, and in a folder you had all your scripts and you were always like looking, okay, or you would you know, search on your computer for your files, uh, or then if you didn't have it, you'd have to go to the web. Now with GitHub, it's really nice because 
when I'm done with something, you know, I take my time when I feel that some code is worth having there, I have it. And then when I want to, uh, maybe I just want to reuse a function so I can just go in, copy paste that function that I've used and use it in another program that I'm working on. Or if, if, a, if a student is working on something, I can just use and say, oh, I, you know, you're going to do this. Okay. Use that part. And then we talk about how we need to modify maybe that function. So it makes, the speed of development is highly increased by increased by doing that. And, uh, you know, I just said facilitation of teamwork, right? So now GitHub is also excellent for teamwork because you can all have your GitHub accounts. You can create a project on GitHub on your computer. People can become members of that project and then you can, you know, commit code, you know, uh, download code. And, and, and so you have a, a centralized way of doing things. Uh, now, we, now, as far as pseudocode, you know, we flowchart the functions. We did this last week, so you, you've already seen an example of that. Input processing and output can be used to show what a function does, and that, you know, that's very true. So usually you want to think of a function, and whenever, you know, a clean function, when you write a clean function or a module, you want to consider actually input processing processing and output and I, I almost you want to make sure that <clears throat> that the function is a black box you know it's something that nobody really has to worry about you know as long as you know what the input is so you know what the <clears throat> input is and the output okay as long as you know that you know it's fine you know and and, and it's a good thing to make a function that is so robust that you hardly have to worry about what's going on in there. So sometimes, you know, inputs are problematic because <clears throat> you can give it numbers, strings, whatever. So even having what is called input validation, which is a chapter that's coming up, is important. And what that means is, you know, for instance, if it's a function for adding two numbers, okay, if somebody writes in a string as an input, then maybe give it, don't, you don't have the function break, but instead you give an error message saying, hey, that's not the appropriate um, value that I was expecting. So making it as robust as possible is good. There are ways to uh, document what a function is. You know, this is an example of this, this thing called an IPO chart uh, for a specific function. So you specify what the input is, uh, you specify what the output is, and then you specify what goes on in here. So whenever you're developing projects, maybe for a client, it's always helpful to create before you do a lot of, you know, your coding to write a document and kind of formulate these things. It, it, it's important because it, it shows, you know, everybody reads it and it shows that everyone's in agreement, you know, and so you can always go back to the document. So, so these are helpful for that, for better understanding. Libraries, so I've, I've already given you a, a good example, I think, of uh, libraries. Obviously, the, the classic library that you will see in, in any kind of textbook that you do in programming is going to be the math library, uh, where you, you, know, you just play with mathematical functions. These are functions that typically accept one or more values as arguments, perform a mathematical operation using the arguments, and return results. Okay, <clears throat> so, you know, pretty straightforward what these things do, you know, square root of something uh, raising, you know, four to the two, right, which you've seen in Python, carrot two, so four, carrot two, okay. So other functions that you have there, um, are just your basic functions that you saw, in, you know, in, in high school. You know, absolute value, cosine, sine, tangent, rounding, etc. So these are, you probably already intuitively know what they do. Uh, so we don't really have to define them. Now, data type conversion functions, these are actually very important. Uh, and we've talked about it, right? So that convert values from one data type to another. So for instance, in pseudocode, you might write them as two integer to real. 
Uh, and then, you know, sometimes real numbers can store integers. Integers cannot store real numbers. Uh, type mismatch errors will occur without converting values. Okay. So there, that's a big topic, actually. Um, some programming languages, you know, sometimes you may not want a number that's real to become an integer because you might lose that decimal and that decimal might actually have some value, especially when it's, you know, like small numbers. Let's say 1.26, 1.28 might actually have a big difference or 1.44, but if they get rounded, you know, that may not be a good, a good thing. You, you know, they would all be one, right? And that's not necessarily what you want. Okay, let's uh, continue. And it just, you know, here it just, it just seems like this, these slides are just uh, going over a lot of, uh, a lot of functions. Um, so yeah, formatting, uh, we're not gonna get into that. Formatting from the pseudocode point of view, I think it doesn't make much sense. At some point we will look at it in Python, but it's just like, presenting something like when you, you have a number like this one, but it's, it's dollars, right? So we, we usually want to put the dollar sign in front, put the comma in there, you know, just to make it more presentable, you know, in other countries, they switch these, you know, those, you know, all kinds of things. So formatting is, is certainly important. String functions, I believe we have a chapter, an entire chapter on strings, um, and, and that kind of ties into arrays as well. So that, you know, there's gonna be functions there for lots of things. Python has lots of, so for instance, a good example is, let's say, you know, you know, let's say, you know, uh, Mary, right? And you can see that the, the first letter is upper, uppercase, so in some situations you want to, you know, maybe to lower, you want to run it through that function. And then what that function would do is it would just make all letters lowercase. You can do the opposite of that. Let's say we want to calculate the length of this, right? So we could do something like that. And then, you know, hopefully this would return four, you know, so those kinds of things. More functions here, you know, uh, is integer. So who can tell me what would be, so is integer and is real test numbers to see if it can be converted to a string. So what would be an example of when we would need this, a function like this? Who can tell me that? What's a good example of, of why would you even, you know, we're dealing with strings, remember, but why would you want to check if something is an integer? you think any thoughts so the question is why would we want to know if it is an integer yeah let's say that we have a string right that's the idea that's the notion that we have a string we got it from the input why would we want to check if it's um if it's an integer what are some uses of that? Maybe if you like calculating something. You're gonna calculate something, right? So we saw an example of this the other day, actually. Uh, I think last week when we had an input, right? And we received the value seven, let's say, but the value seven was a string. And so we were not able to process it, remember that? So we had to do, I believe we did like float seven, and then we converted it immediately to a number and then we were able to process it. In between this and this, we could have added is integer. And using an if statement, which you already know how that works, you could have written something like if, and, and I'm gonna call the input, um, I'm gonna call it uh, my input. Okay, so if, is integer <clears throat> I'm 
going to remove that from there. If it's integer, my input you know, then uh, perform some calculation, then do, you know, my input equal float, oops, float my input. So it's pretty much what we did the last time. The last time we did this, this time, we are doing this part here. So we're basically evaluating if the input that we just read, even though it is technically a string, if the content of it itself contains only characters that are integers. Does that make sense, guys? And that just give, gives us further control, further input validation. So for instance, if it's not, then what would we do? We can just have an else statement. And what would you put in the else statement? What would you put in the else statement? given this logic. Let's say on the exam, I gave you something like this. And I just say, you know, read this code. My input is a string that contains that seven that you see at the top as a string. How would you complete that code? What would you put in that else statement? So if I, so if, it's not an integer or if it is? The, well, the question is, if it's, if it's integer, let's say that we are looking at this one, right? Seven. So what will this return? True or false? Uh, true. True. Very good. Excellent. So if it's true, it's going to go in this direction. Now let's say that this seven is now... Um, you know, B, just the letter B in there. It goes back into the if statement. If is integer B. So now what's it going to evaluate to? That is not an integer. Right? So true or false? False. False. Very good. So all of this will evaluate to false which means that it's not going to execute the, this part, it's not going to execute that. Instead, it goes into the else statement. So what would you put in the else? Else input an integer? You, yeah, display, yeah, exactly. A, a message, right? A, a display, you entered a string, please enter an integer. You see that? That's, you know, that's basically input validation. And that's what these things are used for in general. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Good. All right. So, oh, that's it. So that's that one. So now let's go to the, the slide that, that contains now the Python version of all of this from Gaddis. Uh, so we are done with that one. So let's do now. This one. And as I, you know, as I've said many times, these are uh, a little bit repetitive. So I'm, I'm going to skip certain parts and only cover the parts that, only gonna cover the parts that relate, that are new, that relate to Python basically. So you should be seeing now um, the Python slides, correct, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and go over this. So again, you know, we're gonna define some functions. 
assigning a program to use functions, local variables, passing arguments, global variables, and so on. And then it, it you know it still goes into the, some modules there, like the math module, uh, storing functions and modules. So we've talked a little bit about that. Okay, so a lot of these things that we've talked about already. Now I like this graphic here because it really does capture very well the idea of modular programming. If without you, you seeing the chapter on, on modules and functions and everything, you would have written your code like this, you know, a sequence of statements from beginning to end, but look at how many you have there. Imagine if you had written, you know, that program that I showed you for speech, just like this. I mean, it would have been, you know, a nightmare to maintain, um, you know, if you have 200,000 statements like that. Instead, what you do is you break it up into files, you break it up into functions. So you, you know, you literally end up with modules that are much more easier to read. You know, they're better for our, um, our brain to comprehend. So the program on the left is a long, complex sequence of statements. In the program on the right, the task has been divided into smaller tasks, each of which is performed by a separate function. And then, you know, maybe the inputs or the outputs of one become the inputs to the next one. Doesn't even have to be sequential. Maybe this one requires the inputs from these two. You know, that's certainly possible and so on. So it allows, it gives you a little bit more power to do things uh, as you're developing your program. So the benefits of modularizing a program with functions, um, you know, simpler code, code reuse, all that, we've talked about that already. We've talked about this, talked about that. Here's now, I've shown you examples of this, but here's now how you can define a function in Python, right? So notice that the key things are, <laughs> you use the keyword define, colon, and then notice the indentation. You have to be very consistent, remember, with those indentations. Talked about that. Talked about that. We've talked about flow charting for sure, so we don't have to cover that as well. Talked about this. Let's see. Okay, we, you know, this is a good graph too. It shows how you call show double, which is down here, and then the value five, which is here, gets passed into here, okay? Gets passed into here. Give me a second, guys. There's a lot of noise out there. Sorry about that. All right, so uh, we have a, we have then, as I said, you know, the function, we have a value, and then the value then gets passed uh, into here. And then we perform our task, this, fu this function, we can call it a function, uh, it's, but it's not returning anything. It's not necessary to always return, um, but this is just a structure of how you do things in Python. So the, the parameters, arguments that go in here, right? Um, define where the scope is gonna be, okay? So here, let's see, right? And that's pretty much the same thing. Python allows a fun writing a function that accepts multiple arguments. Uh, and the position is really important of how you, you pass things. So for instance, we've seen we can do three, seven, eight, and then in the function itself, we have A, B, and C. So the order matters in how you do things, right? And you can see a good example of that there. It's a pretty good graph of how the 12 flows into num1 by order. 
and then the 45 flows into num2 by order. All right, so global variables, we talked about that, global constant. Standard libraries, we've talked the import statement. You've already seen that. Um, so that's uh, talked about that, talked about this. And then this example of random numbers. Yeah, so this is just an example of a built in type of math function. So you did somewhere up here import. random and that's why you get to use that sometimes you can also do import random as random like that and then the way that you would write the function then is number random dot rand int one 100 so you can see you can rename things because sometimes a, a name might be pretty long and so to make your code more readable, you, you can shorten it by doing this as something else. Some of these things, don't worry about them. You know, you don't have to remember all of this. It'll, it'll, you'll pick it up um, with time. Certainly the import is important though. See right there. Remember I said this before, you can always think of a function as just what it returns. So in this case, you know, print would, after the function executes, it's a random number in the range one through 10, so seven, you know. So think of functions as what it returns. Okay, these are more examples. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. And then we will do examples of this. So creating a function, right? The structure in Python, quite simply, have the definition, have the colon, indentation, and the return. And then the name of it and the, you know, num, num1, num2 are the parameters that you pass as arguments from the calling function. Okay. Talked about that already. You can't, you can't, you, it does, so that I, maybe I should say, because it might be, it might, you might think, even that all the examples are numbers, you can return other things, like you could return strings. So if you notice this function, get name, has an input, <coughs> has the prompt, and then you type your name in here. <coughs> you know, Bob, Alice, and then you return the name back to the other program. Um, so you can see that there. So it, so it doesn't just have to be uh, numbers. It can also be strings. It could be Boolean, you know, some logic. Now, this is something I had said already, returning multiple values. So in Python, a function can return multiple values, and that's actually pretty useful. Uh, return, you know, A and B and, and whatever. The math module, so something to play with. Uh, you can see lots of fun functions there. Look how many. There's a lot of functions uh, for different kinds of math operations that you can do. Okay, here's an example. Math pi. What's math pi? What's this one? 
on 3.14? Yep. And more numbers, right? So that number actually, whenever you want it, whenever you need it in, 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 in your code, you don't have to type it up, just use math.py. And that will provide, it'll just return that number. So in essence, it's like here, you are writing 3.14, but with all the decimals that it supports, okay? So that can also be very useful. Talked about modularization. Talked about that. We've, we've talked already about um, you naming, I think I showed an example of this before, you name your Python files with the extension .py. Okay. Don't worry, this part I think is a little bit advanced. We might cover this when we look at files, but you know, right now importing your own uh, Python defined functions might be a little bit too much. Uh, just be aware, as I said, you know, understand that you, you can in within one file, you break your code into multiple functions and you can actually have multiple files with multiple functions and then you can just import those files into another main file that brings together all of your programs. Okay. Menu driven program displays a list of operators. Yeah, so this no, we're not going to get into this. We have a we have a section on, on GUI, and so we might you know might cover some of that. And that's it, right? So that's the summary. So just you know, we did an example of this. So now let's go ahead. Uh, in the rest of the time, let's work through some problems. Are there any questions about these slides? Any questions? No questions. All right. So then let's go back to the um, let's share the whiteboard again, and then we will get into the Jupyter notebook and write a little bit of code. But we have to go through these ideas in pseudocode as well. So um, let's do exercise. From chapter three, let's do exercise. Um, let's see. I'm going to share the, the PDF actually just so we can read a problem. Cool. So hopefully, you guys can read it. Oops. Sorry. So from programming exercises, yeah, let's do the first one. Uh, kilometer converter. So it's it's pretty um pretty standard function, right? Or or module. Design a modular program that asks the user to enter a distance in kilometers, and then converts that distance to miles. The conversion formula is as follows. You can see that there. Miles are equal to kilometers times 0 0.6214. All right, so <laughs> it's a very simple program, but we have to implement all of the details of that. So let's um, go to the whiteboard then. We will start with the flowchart probably. Kind of have a, an idea. So let's let's imagine that you know. Although I've said many times that you know, eventually you will try to avoid global variables. You know, it's okay. So we're going to create a global variable here. So I'm going to say global um, constant real kilometers to miles. Right, and then we we basically that's a number that we want to have as a constant. Okay, that's our global variable because it's a global variable. It's not really going to be connected to anything, but it is present there. 
okay? It is present in the scope of the entire program as a global variable. All right, then what do you what do you suggest we do? What do you guys think? What would you do if you were working this problem? We're gonna make a module. Can I see the question again? Huh? Can I see the question again? Uh, what we're, they we're doing a calculator, that's all we're doing. So we um, oh. the, the formula was um Miles is equal to kilometers times, or was it divided or times? Times, right? So times, um, oh, there's the number, zero, six, two, one, two. So what do you do? Okay, so we're going to need, what's that, kilometers? Is that, that what KMS is? Is that kilometers? Yeah, kilometers, yes. So we're gonna have to first put display, enter amount of kilometers. Okay. Now, we're gonna do this um, in functions, right? So let's actually think about it. So, you know, um, let's see, you say, we're kind of thinking about it and I need the kilometers. I have a formula, okay? So then the kilometers need to be passed to the formula. Maybe I'm gonna have two functions or modules, right? You know, maybe this is gonna be a function and then this is going to be a function, okay? So that's kind of the, the approach. So, and then we need to have the main area, right? And so let's let's proceed. Oops, I keep forgetting that that's not how it works. So then, let's create. Let's create, you know, the function. Let's start there. So I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it show miles. Right, and it's going to take real as its input kilometers. Okay, so that's the first thing I'm doing. Um, then, uh, once I do that, I need to have a variable miles, because that's gonna be the result. We might as well, instead of calling it result, let's just call it miles. So we have that. Then after that, I'm gonna have another process set miles equal kilometers times and then times what? Uh, zero six two one four. Okay. Oh, is there another what? You're right, but is there Did another? Did we declare one? at the very point? Huh? Say it. I'm trying to see. Did we declare already at the variable? No, we didn't. Well, look at look at the whiteboard, right? What do you what do you see there? It would have to be the point six two one four. But do we have to code the number in there, or is there another approach that we could take? Um, can you give? Can't you give um zero six two one four a variable, or like? What, what about this? What is that one? What did we say that was? A global, a global constant? A global variable, yeah. Global constant or global variable. So we can just take that one because that one is equal to kilometer, you know, to 0.6214. So when you have numbers like this, it's a good recommendation not to code them in here directly, right? It just it's just a good practice and instead we just do kilometers two miles make sense yeah yeah all right so now that we have that we already did the calculation for miles right we have the calculation and so now we can do 
just display the result, right? So display. Uh, and then we can say, um, KMs. The KMs is equal to to what? Miles, right? Yeah. And that's it. That's your answer. You can also return if uh, return the value if you'd like, or just you know end it. So you can, you know, I, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't matter here to me if you write return or end either way. And you could write end function. So that's also a good one. Um, so with the pseudocode, as I said, you know, I'm, I'm pretty flexible for me as long as it makes sense. So I'm getting a question from a student that they're running the code on a v, the VM. So I, I assume that's a student in one in this class. You don't have to use VMs in this class. Just use Anaconda on your Windows environment. If that's you know. Anyway, um, so <clears throat> we're done with the function here. Okay. What else do we need to define? What else do we need to do? Okay, so we can take a look at receiving the data. So in that case, we can call get kilometers, right? And we can define it as another function. So we can do <clears throat> um, real kilometers. And here you, you shouldn't use the same name for both of these. So I'm actually then going to change this. I like sometimes to do things like this. You know, you can do that kilometers function. It's really any name that you want to give it. A better probably name would be get kilometers because it captures exactly what you're doing. Okay, so it does capture the main purpose. So then this function, all it does is it displays, you know, enter input in kilometers. So that's the other function that we're going to do. Then you're going to have your input kilometers. Right. Oops, that didn't come out right. like that, right? So we have our input. And then we can say, you know, to be more explicit, I would just say return kilometer. I, I kind of like that. It's a little bit different from the way your book does it, but I just think, you know, it makes more sense. All right, um, because that's the variable that you have on there. Um, we could have also actually define this variable in here as, you know, set, you know, uh, set variable and so on. So there's, you know, several ways of doing this. Okay, so that defines that one. And then all that we have left is to define the main module where we call all these functions together. And that should be pretty straightforward. We're just going to do 
main. Okay, then we do declare real distance. You know, what was the name actually? Uh, Oh, this is just a variable that we're using. So actually, we we define the variables. Let me see where we do. I defined that one there. And then for this one, I have miles. I take kilometers as inputs. So I don't, I don't I'm not gonna use any variables outside. All right, I'm just gonna say call. kilometers function, which is the one I created. So call kilometers function, right? And that function had kilometers in there. Okay, so that's the call to it. All right, and then I'm gonna have call kilometers, right? Show miles, right? Oh yeah, I didn't know what we named it. Yeah, show miles. Show miles, and this should take kilometers as an input. And then this just ends. Now, the question here is, what's a good way? I don't actually like how the pseudocode in the book does things of passing parameters because this function is going to return, the first one returns a value, KMs. So uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna say probably it would make sense actually to create a variable outside. So I'm gonna do set kilometers in there to kind of imply that and then here call kilometers set oh actually I, I know how I'm gonna do it. this is how I would do it set kilometers to equal call kilometers function. I just, you know, I, I like that a lot better. Um, and so now I have, you know, a variable just so that it's sort of there. I call kilometers function, it returns, and that value is assigned to kilometers. And then now that kilometers, which is this one sort of used over here, it only exists within the scope of this and now show miles doesn't, you know, gets the input that's needed. So that's, you know, that's a good, um, that's a good representation of it, I think, that is very clear. Are there any questions, guys? Questions? No. No questions. All right. So now that we, we've done that part, the flow chart, let's go ahead and do the um, pseudocode. And then after that, we will 
implement this in our Jupyter Notebook and see it in action. So let's go ahead with the pseudocode, it should be pretty straightforward. Global or constants. No, global, global constant is global constant. And then we can say constant. You can also write global constant if you'd like. That's perfectly fine. If that's more clear for you. And then we call it kilometers. Two miles. Equals 0 0.6214. Then we do module, just going to do module main and then end module. So here I'm going to declare, and this is kind of what I had done, right? So declare hmm, declare real. Uh, cams. Then I'm going to do cams full call get what is it? It was uh, cams full. Cams function. Okay, and then after that, uh, we have cams in there. So then we call show miles cams. Okay, and that's pretty much it. So now we just need to define the other two functions. And that's going to be module get, no, it's, uh, oh yeah, get, uh, keep forgetting this, KM's function, KM's function, right? <coughs> And so it's just going to be display and then enter distance in kilometers. And then we're going to do an input uh, kilometers. So I probably should have declared a variable in here. set kilometers as real. And then I'm going to do input kilometers. And then I'm going to do return kilometers. So that should take care of that. So if I do KM's function, yeah, so it returns kilometers there. And then I'm going to go to the last one. <laughs> And I just need to display the results. So this is probably the easiest one. Do module show miles. Miles <clears throat> and module. This one actually takes kilometers as input as an argument there. And then I'm going to do, I don't, um, so I need to do the process, right? So I'm going to declare real or float miles. And then I'm going to do set miles equal kilometers times, times what? Kilometers times uh, the kilometers eight by zero six one four. Not the number. The uh, 
kilometer to mile or global a global constant. Yes, the global constant. Very good. So we're going to say kilometers to miles. I'm just going to shorten it. Okay. Uh, obviously, the name would have to match exactly. Okay, guys. But just for brevity here. And then once I do that, you know, I just print the results. So display. You know, and I can say the kilometers are equal to miles. All right, so I do this like that, and basically I have finished what I was trying to do. Does this make sense? Are there any questions? All right, so you split up the pseudocode into the main module, the um, the kilometer function, and then just the, the kilometers module. So you just put each module up by itself in the pseudocode? Yeah, so I have three functions here, yes. All right, that's it. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's multiple ways of doing this, right? But uh, this just gives you an idea. You will see that in the... In the Python code, what I'm about to do now, I'm not really going to have a third function per se. Um, but let's, so I'm, you know, I'm running out of time. So let's, uh, let's get to that. And so that we can do it, do the program. Okay, so I'm starting <clears throat> my Jupyter notebook. Oh, I need to share. All right, so you should now be seeing my Jupyter notebook here, right? Uh, so I'm going to create a new Python 3. All right, there we go. And um, so I'm going to say, I'm going to create a, a markdown calculator no, converter conversion um, <clears throat> kilometers two miles. Okay, and then now we're gonna start writing our code. And the first function I'm gonna create is, I'm gonna create just a variable, um, call it kilometers two miles. And that's gonna be 0 0.6 Two one four. Okay, I'm going to do that. Uh, then I'm going to do. So we can break this up into parts also. So I can do. Um, right, something like that. I can even then put a comment here. And say. Uh, now. define the function to read in the distance in kilometers. Do something like that, All right? And so this is what's so <clears throat> what's great about the Jupyter notebook is you can start, you know, writing things in there. So then I'm going to do define um, get kilometers. Notice the con con naming conventions that I'm using, right? So I just want something like that. Get kilometers doesn't need to take an input. I'm going to hit enter. Notice it gives me this, the, the indentation so I can trust that if I want to just be consistent with it. And so now I'm going to say print 
enter distance in kilometers, right? And I'm going to, I'm going to, now notice in Python, you don't really have to declare the variable. I can just do it in the statement here. So that's what I'm going to do. KMs equal input, right? And I just do that. And then this is just then going to return kilometers. Okay. All right now I can go over here and say now define now define the function to calculate to calculate miles given kilometers. Hopefully I'm not missing anything. So now I'm going to do <clears throat> my other function, define, uh, let's call it to be more explicit, calculate miles. This one, I wanted to take an input, <clears throat> it's going to be kilometers. That it's not the same. <clears throat> so I want to stress <clears throat> this kilometers here is not the same as this kilometer. So in fact, I us I would usually just do this, but to be more explicit, I'm going to say kilometers input. Okay. Now remember, we're probably going to be reading that in as a string. So don't forget that we might need to go to the code and modify it here, right? Um, to do kilometers, um, what was the, the typecast? You guys remember? Like that, right? Something like that. So, so that if it's an, a, a string, I want to convert it to float. Then I come back over here and now what do I need to do? I need to perform the operation, right? So I'm going to do miles. <clears throat> Miles equal kilometers input times times what? Um, kilometers to miles. Kilometers to miles. Very good. So <clears throat> kilometers to miles. Simple as that. All right. And then once I have my miles, I'm pretty much done with all with all of this. So then I'm going to say, um, just, I'm going to print out the result, print, and I'm going to say uh, the result is, I'm going to put a space in there, and then I'm going to put a comma, and then miles. All right, so hopefully that will take care of that function. And you don't have to do a return there. <clears throat> now, now none of this, notice we don't have anything yet. I run this code and there's nothing, right? Nothing is happening because I still need to call all of this. Now, this is where in Python, you wouldn't usually create a main function. Some people do, and that's perfectly fine. You could, you could do define main, you know, you could do that. I'm not going to do it really. So what I would do is I would do um, kilometers equal get kilometers, right? And that one will prompt, hopefully get the variable, convert it, return it, and assign it to kilometers again. This kilometers here is different from this kilometer, kilometers here. They're not the same variable. And that's one thing to understand. This is only, this only exists in the scope of that function. Whereas this one is an outside one. This one was only for the scope of calc miles. Okay, so that's an important uh, element that might be a little bit confusing in the beginning.
all right? But you get used to it. So you, you always just assume everything is localized, right? Um, and maybe, maybe to, to avoid, you know, confusion, you might want to change it. You know, it, it, that's perfectly fine as well. For sanity, right? You know, you, you can say in kilometers and that way you know for sure. I actually sometimes do that just for complete sanity. So I make sure that even though I know they're not, I'm just kind of explicitly doing it. All right, so in kilometers, I have that there. And again, there's many ways of doing this code. You know, this is just one solution. And then now I have my input that I get from get kilometers. <coughs> And then I would then uh, proceed to, what would you do next? Guys, what would you do next? Mm -hmm. Hmm? What's missing? Notice I run it now, enter distance in kilometers. So what's give me a distance in kilometers? Uh, 20. 20 kilometers, All right. How many, how much is that in miles? Uh, it'll be something like, huh? like, it'll be what, something like 14 or something like that? Well, let's do a simpler one, 10, right? So 10. Will be so that would be like 6.2. Exactly, very good. 6.2, right? So I, but I entered the 10 and it didn't give me the result. How come? What's missing? Oh, you got to set, no, you already, you already said it. I, I ran this function, get kilometers. Uh, so I'm running this one for yeah. sure, right? And I get the value into in kilometers. <clears throat> but am I actually doing the calculation at this time? No. Why not? Because you only got the kilometers. You didn't calculate it yet. Right. So I defined calc miles, but I haven't used it yet. I have to call it, correct? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to say... <clears throat> Don't forget, oops, <clears throat> don't forget to call out miles. So don't forget to, to call that function, All right? So you want to state that, All right? And so now that we've stated it, okay, I'm going to call it. So. In this case, notice calc miles does not need to return anything. So really, oops, I just have to calc miles. Does it take an input? No. No? Oh. Uh, calc miles. Are we already getting cal inputs from the gig cal? We have the in, we call get kilometers, right? Yeah. And get the input and we assign it in kilometers. So that 10 that we gave it is an in kilometers, right? Yeah. But count miles, if you look at it, <clears throat> look at it over here, it needs it, right? It needs the value there. So how do we do that? What do I need to do? Oh, miles. I'm calling count miles, but Cal I need to miles. provide an input. What's the input? The input will be 10. What will be the... Right, 10, but 10 is currently in a variable. Which variable stores it? Um, the, the input come out. Uh, input kilometers, right? Yes. Perfect. Good job. All right, so then we're going to do int AMS, right? And that function then would execute whatever is in here, perform the calculation and print the result. Do you guys see that? And this gave me an error. Can't multiply sequence by non-int 
of piped quotes. Don't multiply. So do we have to change the float into an integer? It shouldn't be an in, I mean, it should be a float. What am I missing here? Because this should be kilometers input, calc miles gets int KMS from get KMS, but I already converted this to float, didn't I? Let me just do integer just for see what happens. Mark miles. That's an odd error. Int multiplied sequence by non int. Let me try. really strange because this is just 10 point zero by that. Okay, I'm just going to try this whole operation. Something is strange. Do you guys see something maybe? Uh, maybe print here. So that's the number, so that works just fine. So then what is going on? Calc miles. Is, I don't know, is it because KMS underscore input wasn't really defined? Besides, it was in the parentheses. It was defined here. It was defined there. Let me just do, I'm going to comment this out. And I'm just going to do print. Hello. Now. And okay, now I'm going to try that again. Count. Uh, 
in kilometers. All right, so that the result is six two one nine. Now it's working. So it was because we changed it to an ant instead of a float. Yeah. Let's see. Let me call calc miles just again down here. Calc miles is not defined. Okie dokie. It clearly says defined, calc miles. Hmm. I said, I said, well, we did define it. It says to find counts. Yeah. So this is defined. So now, So this one, I don't get why this is not running. So just to keep it a little bit Cleaner. Let me copy. Right there, I'm going to copy this here. And then these two. I'm going to copy this one down here. Let me try this. Try a new notebook here. Forget kilometers, floats, get rid of that, half miles. All right, so we're going to enter 10. 
Oh, there it is. All right. So, so that just a little bit cleaner to do it in one single function. I think when I was doing it, breaking it up into the parts, it was just, you know, having some strange behavior there. But if you just do the whole thing in one single box, you have your kilometers to miles, you have your, you, your get kilometers, your calc miles, and then you have these two. So that's sort of what I would recommend just, you, you know, to keep things more simple is, um, you know, have everything in one single box and then, you know, you, you should get the answer that we expected. So I'll take a look at what it was exactly about the way I was doing it that was causing the error. But certainly here, this is what we would have wanted. Does this make sense, guys? Yeah, so why now does the flow work and last time the energy at the end? Say that again? So it's just because we had it in different boxes that it didn't work? Yeah, I think so. Oh, and, and this I should re rewrite, right? I need to do, uh, this was kilometers input. And this was actually kilometers to miles. Let me try that again. All right, so it's, it's working. Yeah, so um, it's just really that. Um, I'll take a look at that, you know, in the Jupyter notebook. I'm sure I was doing something wrong as I was shifting around with all these boxes. Um, so it's always a little bit more helpful. Well, here, because everything is within the same scope, um, it worked out a little bit better. Does this make sense? Yeah. yeah. Are there any questions? Nope. So the reason that kilometers is float is because it's interchangeable? It's float because this will read it as a string, right? So you kind of have to type cast it. Gotcha. In, uh, because otherwise it, it's, it's a number, but it's a number that's as a, represented as a string. So we want to convert it into kilometers, basically, into float. So right. if I would have put it, huh? if I would have made it put it and made an integer, that wouldn't have been correct. Well, the problem is, what if you entered instead of ten? I mean, it's possible that you could have ran, you could have gone running for three point seven kilometers, right? Yeah. You know what I mean. So mm. by doing it as float, you you make it a little bit more. Um, usable, general, for, uh, for all applications. Gotcha. All right. You, will, you won't always be on, on an even, you know, an exact number. You will go 1.8 miles, 1.7 kilometers, etc. Okay? Yep. All right, guys. So this, we're going to stop here for today then, and I will see you guys on uh, Tuesday, be on the lookout for this homework assignment. There will be, you know, the same four to five problems. Um, and I will be posting that sometime, hopefully tomorrow. By tomorrow, check uh, kind of the same idea. Create the link, put in the PDF. Is our, is our quiz Tuesday or is it Thursday? We have an exam on, this is, we're currently on week four and the exam is on week six. So not oh. next week, the following. Okay. Yep. Any other questions? All right. If there are no questions, we'll stop here for today and I will see you guys on Tuesday.